Hi everyone, Mary here, and this time we're going to talk about different types of waves. Um, there are three kinds, transverse, longitudinal, and surface. Transverse waves are waves that are like light waves, longitudinal waves are like sound waves, and surface waves occur at the boundary between different media, and the surface of water is a surface wave. So let's talk about the differences between each of these. First off, we're going to talk about transverse waves. Definition of a transverse wave is one where the medium, which is the material that the wave goes through, vibrates perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. Now this is how this works. If I have a wave that is going in this direction from left to right, the material the wave is going through actually vibrates in this plane at a 90 degree angle or perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. Those of you who are taking the face-to-face -face or the hybrid classes, we're actually going to play with slinkies in class. And when we play with slinkies, this is going to be quite obvious. Those of you who are taking the physics class online, um, I've got a couple of videos I'm going to embed here that will show you some some of these waves going through a slinky. But you, that's really the best way to see one of these waves, where you actually see the wave pulse traveling from left to right, and you see the slinky moving from up and down as the wave actually travels. But that's a transverse wave. Light waves are transverse waves. Any wave that is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, so that includes all the radio waves, AM, FM, um, all of the different radio frequencies you might listen to, gamma radiation, which is used for um, treating cancer, x-rays used for imaging, all the visible light you and I see, the ultraviolet light, which actually gives you a sun burn, infrared, which makes you warm, microwave for cooking, and even your cell phone waves are all transverse waves. And the fact that they have this kind of a wave shape has a lot to do with how they are propagated, how an antenna has to be set up to receive them or transmit them. So the shape and the properties of one of these kinds of waves has a lot of influence on how all of these different kinds of waves um, are treated and can be used in science. The second kind of wave is referred to as a longitudinal wave. It is also called a compression wave. Uh, the two names are pretty much interchangeable depending upon the author or the instructor you're working with. Here's the definition of a longitudinal wave. In a longitudinal wave, the wave medium vibrates in the same direction that the wave travels. So again, the wave is traveling from left to right, but this time the individual particles are oscillating left to right. They are oscillating in the same direction that a wave travels. They are not going up and down like transverse waves. They are actually oscillating back and forth in the same direction that the wave itself is moving. A sound wave is a compression wave or a longitudinal wave. And the way this works is something like this. If I have a tuning fork and there are air molecules all the way around that tuning fork, when that tuning fork vibrates, the tuning fork goes forth and pushes against the air molecules to the right and the left. What it does is it squishes the air molecules next to it very, very, very close together and it creates areas of higher than normal atmospheric pressure. Areas of higher than normal atmospheric pressure in a longitudinal wave are called compressions. Now this is very much like a crest in a transverse wave, very much like a crest in a transverse wave. It's called a compression. Now when the tuning fork oscillates inward, what happens is it leaves behind it, it pulls in, and it leaves behind it an area of lower than normal atmospheric pressure, and those areas are referred to as rarefactions. A rarefaction is kind of like a trough in a transverse wave. These are areas with lower pressure, and it corresponds to a trough of a transverse wave. This oscillation continues where the tuning fork pushes outward, high area of pressure, and then pulls inward, low area of pressure. 
and then pushes outward, high area of pressure, and then pulls inward, low area of pressure. And these changing waves of pressure from high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction, these travel through air, and that is a sound wave. Now, when you have a longitudinal or a compression wave, it must have a medium to compress. So sound waves cannot go through a vacuum. It has to have a material that it can squish together and then have an area where there is a low pressure and then an area of high pressure. And this leads to the old movie poster for the movie Alien that is a 40 year old movie now or 50 years old, it's been around a while. And the old tagline for that movie that says, in outer space, no one can hear you scream. And it's due to the fact that you cannot have sound in a vacuum. And it's due to the fact that a sound wave or any longitudinal wave must have a medium in order to compress. Now surface waves occur at the boundary between two materials, between two medium. Um, and the two media have to have different speeds so that the material will travel at one speed in one material and another speed in another. Where do you and I see this the most often? We see it most often in water waves. Um, surface waves do not travel terribly deep. Um, this illustration says they, they're kind of negligible below about half one wavelength below the surface. And the actual path of a particle in a surface wave is circular. If you ever go fishing and you have a little, a little fishing bobber, you're sitting in your boat and you've got a little bobber out there waiting for the fish to strike. If you watch the bobber, what it's going to, the path it's going to follow as a wave goes by is the bobber is going to go through a little, whoop, a little dipsy doodle circular path as a wave goes over it it's going to go whoop, it's going to go up and down now the wave is going to travel as as i've illustrated before from left to right but each individual particle is going to go in a little circular path as you go deeper within the medium those circles get smaller and smaller and smaller so that they eventually end up just kind of as a tiny little back and forth oscillation you go deep enough in the medium and the surface effects, like the wind effects, become negligible deep within the ocean. Now why do we get breakers, these, this, this kind of beautiful breaker wave at the shore? Well we do that because of this circular pattern and as the depth of the ocean floor gets shallower and shallower and shallower, the whole circle, the wave circular pattern, doesn't have enough space to maintain or go around totally in its complete circle. Um, the bottom part of the circular pattern kind of gets dragged or pushed on because of friction. That slows the water down, down on the lower part of the wave. And the top part of the wave actually outruns, is traveling faster, because it doesn't encounter that low friction down below. And so the top part of the wave does travel a smidge faster than the lower part of the wave. And because of the fact that it's going in a circle and it's outrunning the bottom part of the wave, you get this beautiful, beautiful breaker shape that we all associate with huge waves. Earthquake waves. Um, earthquake also produce waves, and they produce all three kinds, transverse, longitudinal, and surface. So if you have a massive earthquake someplace, there are going to be surface waves, and the surface waves aren't going to be terribly deep, but boy howdy, they are going to definitely cause a massive amount of up and down motion on the surface, and you can imagine shake the bits out of buildings and people up above. Um, there are going to be S waves. S waves are going to cause the actual uh, terrain to buckle up and down, and then there are P waves or pressure waves. Pressure waves are longitudinal or, or compression waves, and it's by analyzing these different kinds of waves that we've been able to discover an awful lot of information about the interior of planet Earth, because some of these waves, like S waves, do not travel very well through liquids. And because of where we have different earthquake sensors around our planets and all the earthquakes that are going on, micro-earthquakes that occur daily on planet Earth, we've been able to map 
the interior of our planet. And so we have a pretty good idea. And that is due to all of the different kinds of waves and their properties. All right, that will do for this time. And we will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>